Hey guys, Level Cap and Luton here with On the Level, the series where Luton and I talk about upcoming battlefield changes or things we want to see in the game. And today's subject matter is going to be what we want to see in Battlefield 4. So, Luton, why don't you start us off with uh, one of the first things that you'd like to see in Battlefield 4. Okay, so one of the things I would really like to see is a little bit more balancing between the whole PC and console system problem. And a lot of people have a lot of issues with this, a lot of people saying, well, it should have been for just one or the other, or, you know, it doesn't work for console because the maps are too big, or it doesn't work for PC because the maps are too small, and all this kind of stuff. I really think that what they could do with the next title is try and address that a little bit. Try and, you know, balance it up for everyone, and because they're going to make it across a broad system, okay? They want to appeal to everyone, they want to, you know, do it cross-platform. But I think a good way around that is to just try and make, okay, let's say about, I don't know, eight medium-sized maps that can work well for both, all right? And then maybe tailor three specific maps, which you can only get on PC or the console. And those maps could be tailored, you know, to specific game modes, perhaps, I don't know, one or two for Rush, maybe one other Conquest, something like that, just to give each system something that is their own. And, you know, we're not talking very much, we're just talking a couple of maps, and then hopefully that would you know help alleviate the imbalance that we have with some of the larger smaller map problems does that sound something that would be good uh, for you level do you think that would help with that issue yeah absolutely um i know console players especially in large maps like caspian border sort of uh, feel like they're playing in a large sandbox with nobody else around or just not enough people to populate the maps um i think bad company 2 uh you probably would agree with me that bad company 2 had a more a focused style gameplay that worked out better with consoles and still uh, was great map design for PC play as well. And I think they could, um, I, I don't believe the game will be coming out on the next gen consoles or even if it does, I'm sure they'll want it to come out on the previous gen consoles as well. So I think in Battlefield 4 console guys will still be limited player wise. So uh, you'll definitely have to do something with the mouse to make it a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's definitely true. I mean, Battlefield 4 def is probably coming out around sometime later in next year, I would imagine, and there's been talk of the next-gen consoles around that period, so who knows whether or not they may want to hold off, and you know, there's going to be the whole thing of graphics and so on and, and performance, and I'm pretty sure that with the new consoles, probably what they'll do is just bump up the memory. I mean, that's most of all they can do is just improve the hardware in it. So, mm -hmm. what would be your next thing? Well, on the sort of PC console subject matter, I think that the next Battlefield title should definitely try and upgrade the user interface for the PC players. Um, in Battlefield 3, it was pretty clear that the interface was very much uh, a console port on many ways, and a lot of people did their own renditions of what a Battlefield 3 PC interface should be like. Uh, and you just, it took like a second to look at it and realize how infinitely more. Uh, useful and quick it would be to select weapon loadouts because I mean I understand with consoles you know you got your two uh, joysticks and stuff uh, to move around and go through the menus but on a PC you got a mouse so you can click anywhere on the screen and the UI just isn't designed for that and one thing that I think uh, we really lost from games like Bad Company 2 was the ability to just click on the minimap on your squad mate and spawn directly onto the squad mate that was in the best position. You know, you look on the minimap and you're like, oh, my teammate's on, he's almost on the MCOM. I should spawn on him and uh, help him arm that MCOM or defend him or whatever. But in Battlefield 3, you got to sort of like go through your squad on the side and try and figure out which one is the one next to the MCOM as opposed to just clicking right on them, you know? So it's become a bit more sluggish and I definitely think uh, the UI could use an upgrade. Do you think uh, it consoles need an upgrade or do you think it's good with consoles? I don't think it's I don't think it's bad with consoles for exactly as you said it, it seems to have been designed around that that way of doing things you know we can click left and right and we can choose the selections that we need to when it comes to squads obviously you just move up or down select the person that you want to go on to so it's interesting that they went that way I mean obviously the whole thing of selecting your mini map and clicking anywhere that's not going to really happen uh, with consoles so I guess in terms of trying to produce a game that will work across platform they obviously just went with that and they went okay it's just going to have to be like this. I think it's difficult because you can tailor things so specifically to any you know system, and I can see definitely that's a need for the PC. But I just think that it's going to be tricky. I think it's going to be tricky for them to weigh up 
how much they want to put into one thing because if you're not careful what you're going to end up with is a completely different uh, system for PC and almost an individual game in many ways but um, I do think that they could probably do with tweaking it a bit you know maybe not go full out but maybe make some changes that make it a little bit more easy a little bit more user friendly yeah just just the effort that they put in a bad company too is basically all I'm asking for okay so what's what's the next thing you want to talk about I think for me, uh, vehicles, and this was mentioned by one of my subscribers actually, but it's a very, very good idea. And basically what we're talking about here is people hopping in and out of vehicles and how quickly you can do that. A good example was that I played several rounds and I've talked about this was that I was defending Oman, I was on conquest and I was in the air, I was in one of the jets. We were keeping it totally clear of other vehicles, we were taking down jets and helicopters as they were coming in and we were, everyone was fighting on the beaches and stuff but we were flying around. Uh, supporting our team. When it got to the end of the round I ended up with no kills and basically almost no score. I think I was second from the bottom despite the fact that I'd been supporting the team while keeping the airspace clear and the problem was was that every time you would get to you know another vehicle to 20% or whatever they would just bail immediately and you could never pick up a kill. The other issue is with tanks and stuff like that the same thing is people would just bail immediately and what was mentioned was that you have the idea that it maybe has a little bit more of a dynamic, it takes maybe a couple of seconds for someone to actually climb out of their vehicle. Um, and in doing so, it makes it a bit more tactical. They have to actually have some thought about whether they want to get out. And similarly, this could be for co-pilots and gunners, things like this. Um, you know, if they want to get out to repair, they have to actually make a conscious choice of, okay, I know it's going to take me a little bit of time to get out here. Is it safe enough for me to do so? Um, some people might say, well, this will slow the game down a little bit. That's probably true, but I think it would help the overall balance and the dynamic of the game. I mean, do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, when you say that, I just think of the Halo animation system, which uh, looks so good and really did work so well, because everybody knows Halo is an extremely fast-paced game, probably more fast-paced than Battlefield. I would say definitely more fast-paced than Battlefield. Yet they can they use the animation system of getting in and getting out of vehicles so well. In fact, they incorporate the sort of jumping onto vehicles as they go by in some of the later Halo titles. But I think that would be a great thing for Battlefield to benefit from. And I think it's almost funny at this stage in the game when they've got these super dynamic knifing animations that are different for every single position. That you're standing around the guy like you can knife him while he's laying on the ground. You can knife him. While he's like leaning out here and it'll, it'll do all these different knifing animations just for knifing the guy. Yet when you get into a Jeep, you just pop into the Jeep. You pop out of the Jeep. It's uh, it's a very old school looking animation. And I know it's sort of uh, been with Battlefield all this time. But I think they could definitely use an upgrade. And it would prevent a little bit of like what you said. People just bailing out of jets instantly. Like if you're going to bail out, then... You got to pull the ejection seat. Maybe it'll be a second or two delay before the canopy pops off and all this stuff. Or uh, with Jeep jihading, you can't just pop out of the Jeep. You got to like maybe dive out Grand Theft Auto style, do a mm -hmm. little roll on the ground and then stand up. And then you have the ability to detonate your C4 just a little bit more. It would not only would it make the game look better, but I think it would play out a lot better as well. There's other situations you think about, like you say, the jihading of the jeeps and stuff like that. I mean, think about this as well. If we're thinking about armoured kill coming in, um, when you have a lot of that tank combat and there's tanks rushing past each other, you know there's going to be times where a tank comes up against another tank, the guy weighs up his options and thinks, you know, I'm not going to be able to deal with this. So when they're close together, he'll jump out, throw C4 in him, detonate it, and jump back in his own tank. Now that's the kind of stuff I don't think really works within the dynamic of Battlefield, and that's something I think adding a slight delay in terms of getting out, I think that would help to alleviate it, you know? Yeah, I agree 100%. Okay, what's your next one? Okay, so the next thing that I'd like to see in Battlefield 4 is for them to continue to expand on the destruction when they first implemented destruction um, in the... Was it Bad Company 1? I never played Bad Company 1. I yeah, it think it was did just have Bad some. Company. Okay, but I think it, it kind of came full swing in Bad Company 2 yeah. uh, where you could just demolish cities. And it's kind of funny because I think Battlefield 3 really took a step back. Now, in one aspect... They're trying to do more city-based combat. Leveling like uh, Paris to the ground wouldn't exactly be an option. I mean, that would be incredibly complex to do. But at the same time, when you compare it to Bad Company 2, where you're running through all these villages or small towns and you literally have the option to bring every single building to the ground and then destroy uh, bridges and other major uh, methods of transportation, literally like sculpting the battle on the map, 
Uh, you've lost a lot of that in Battlefield 3, and I think, although it does look great, um, it feels a little bit uh, more restricted, and I think that Battlefield 4 should continue to expand on the destruction, you know? I mean, they're pretty clever about making certain structures solid in Battlefield 3, so they could kind of um, sculpt the battle, you know, better plan out the maps and stuff, but uh, I think they sort of, they're on a good path and then they just stopped a little bit too soon. I think they need to take it a little bit more further, make uh, more destructible bridges or make more objects in the maps where you can destroy. It was kind of like we were talking about last episode, we were talking about um, the earthquakes changing the map. Well, if you could use destruction to literally change the layout of the map a little bit more, again, like you could in Bad Company too. If there's a whole village in front of you, uh, with guys held up in the buildings, you, you park a few tanks, start taking down all those buildings, all of a sudden they don't have cover anymore, so it changes the layout of the map as you progress. Yeah, I definitely agree, and I can think of stuff on like Bad Company 1, there, there was a lot of solid bridges and stuff. If you think about like Sane Crossing's bridges, um, you know, they're very large and they're very solid, but what you could do is you'd eat away at the thin sections using C4. So those thinner sections, you know, it might take you two guys with all their C4, but you would be able to blow apart those thin sections and that would just prevent any vehicles going off across, you know. It wouldn't take down the whole bridge, but it would prevent that. Um, and there's other mm -hmm. stuff, like think about Wake Island, which has always been classic for, you know, destroying those bridges and, and preventing or making it more difficult to travel those routes. Um, yeah. You can't do anything to them. I couldn't believe it when I got on there. I was firing, you know, RPGs at the bridge thinking, okay, this will go down. It just does nothing. It's made of wood, for Christ's sake, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so it, it is a bit stupid. I mean, there's other stuff as well. Think about, like, um, you know, very specific situations like on Metro, uh, the ticket office. Weird that you can't blow up that apart at all. It's just faith, you know, it's a thin concrete wall, and yet you can't do anything. So I was a bit disappointed, actually. It's one of the things I was a bit disappointed with Battlefield 3. Um, there is obviously some, some buildings that you can have massive destruction on, um, and obviously taking out the sides of those buildings is really spectacular, and it's great that they can do that. But overall, I felt the destruction was a lot less than Bad Company 2, and I, I yeah, I think it was a bit of a shame. It really spoiled it a little bit for me. Let's see, what's the next subject you want to talk about? Okay, the next one for me is I would like to see more water-based combat. Um, I'd like to see more small boats, jet skis, perhaps even hovercraft. Um, I always feel like there hasn't been enough of that. I know in Bad Company 2 there were several maps um, which it really had an element of, of sort of, yeah, naval combat. You'd have to get, or sort of think about like Navy SEALs and stuff, you know, moving in fast and stealthy using, you know, little jet skis or whatever. Um, and they were, or, you know, maybe you could, I don't know, maybe you could have canoes or something, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, well, you do get canoes, you could have little things, but, you know, you could just have one person on his own little mission or something. But um, I would like to see that bit more maps and not just as landing craft. I, I feel like they've kind of, again, with Battlefield 3, I think many of the maps, uh, the water based stuff has been pushed back just to the role of landing craft where they literally mm -hmm. just run into the beach and jump out and um, I know there's some maps you can have like Karg where you know using the boats you can circumnavigate like all the way around to those other bases and that can be quite a useful thing or no shark canals too yeah exactly um, and obviously wake is a, is a big one for it but I would really like to see a bit more you know perhaps a couple of maps specifically designed for it um, and as we said one of my ideas I would, you know, think about something like a, a submarine uh, base, something like that. That, that obviously was in uh, was, was in COD, but um, that wasn't what I was thinking of. I was thinking more of the idea of, of having a submarine base as one section of a map, um, and mm -hmm. then there's a lot of kind of water areas and so on and so on, maybe little canals running through areas, and you can use those water canals to get to different areas, and perhaps even having the possibility of going underwater. Um, I think it would be a great thing to have the ability to, to reach certain areas only by going underwater, perhaps a specific tower, or it's a shortcut or something like that. Um, and then perhaps you could have underwater mines or whatever, you know, underwater mines to prevent boats going different places. So I, I think the whole kind of naval and, and water aspect could do with a little bit of an upgrade. You know, how far you take that, I'm not sure. But um, I just feel like at the moment it's, it's literally pushed to the role of landing craft. And I feel like it's a whole unexplored area that you could really do a lot more with. I agree 100%. And uh, that's one of the things that people were kind of joking about is like, uh, the LAVs are these amphibious vehicles and yet the only time you ever have them in the water is when you're taking them from the aircraft carrier to the land whereas um, even in Battlefield 2 they had a lot more rivers and uh, areas where you could you would actually be using them 
to cross over areas where say tanks wouldn't have the advantage from so mm. you're getting a little bit more amphibious stuff and even the boats in that had a, a better field of view so the machine gunner on the front of uh, one of those Navy SEAL style um, inflatable uh, boats could um, go around and you could start taking out guys with 50 cal nowadays it's I mean, have you ever gotten a kill with a boat 50 cal? Like, I mean, it's a pretty <laughs> right. big event when it happens. It, there's just so few situations where you're like, man, I really wish I had a boat in a 50 cal right now. I mean, there's there's very few situations. So the maps could definitely be geared more towards it. And I think they could also maybe uh, put some armor on some of the 50 cals or something. Mm. So people aren't well, just so give, incredibly vulnerable. Give them, give them a bit more power. I mean, did you play um, Vietnam and Bad Company 2? Did you play that at all? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. The 50 cals in Battlefield 3 are like laughable compared to what they should be in real life or compared to Vietnam. The, the Vietnam boats were, if you've never seen this guys, look it up because they are, you know, devastating. They're hellish. Uh, you know, the twin machine guns on that, you really would unleash hellfire against your, t you know, your enemies just sitting up there, you know, racking up the ammo. Um, so yeah, that, that was a great thing. I mean, those boats in Battlefield 3 would be unbelievable. So yeah, I think it's a big area to explore. All right, what's your next yeah. one? Okay, so this is uh, something that I think console players can definitely relate to. Um, is I would like to restrict custom game settings to unranked servers. And my reason for this is because most people want to play in ranked games. They like their stats, they like ranking up, they like unlocking guns. So most people are going to want to play in ranked games. But if you absolutely have the urge to play on something with crazy rules like instant vehicle spawn or like 5,000 tickets or this or that, then you can go play an unranked custom game. Why I want this is because right now it's so hard to find a game on PC that isn't instant vehicle spawn for like Conquest. And, uh, you know, DICE has put a lot of time into figuring out the basic game settings, the basic rule settings that they think puts out the most balanced and fun and entertaining gameplay. Yet the most popular servers now are instant vehicle spawns and things that are, are super fast paced and crazy that allow people to rank up uh, vehicles real fast because they just keep unlocking and it's nothing but endless, endless vehicle combat. Uh, but it just leads to a very unbalanced and uh, just overly destructive and crazy gameplay mode, which I've never really been a fan of. And especially if... Uh, you like air vehicles and you're trying to fly around in those having having an instant vehicle spawn map is just an absolute nightmare because in a jet you'll be doing nothing but shooting down other jets because there's never uh you know they never run out of a jet supply or if you're in a helicopter duel and you take down the other chopper you got another chopper to go against or even um tanks you know if you're approaching a spawn point you blow up the tank that just spawned there and attacked you well another one just spawns right after that and somebody else can hop back into that you know, if people want to mess around with these game modes, I say fine, let them, but let them do it in an unranked game, and that will force people into playing some of the better balanced and honestly more fun game modes, and I think uh, it'll probably increase the longevity of the game. Uh, it's, unfortunately, it's unfortunate because you're sort of giving people right now in this current state the option to choose what they want to do, but um, I think we're making the wrong decision. You know, people are more concerned about filling up their server as opposed to uh, putting servers out there with good balanced game modes. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, I wouldn't have so much of an issue with it if it wasn't for the fact that DICE servers seem to have almost disappeared. I know you can find them, but normal maps, you know, normal game modes that existed before seem to have almost vanished and I think that is what has frustrated so many people is that it's not a case of you know choosing between the two it's a case that they literally can't find these normal maps um, I mean that's for example why on my own server I try to run it with standard rules on you know the best maps to play for because and there's so many people come to my server and just say thank god for this or you know these are the best games I've had in weeks um, just because it's on the normal mode so they get a much more balanced game out of it um, yeah, I totally agree though. I, I think they should do that. And I can't understand why they why they didn't see this coming when they released people to have their own servers and stuff. So yeah, I think that's definitely one to put in. Okay, so I think we're nearly at the end now, but is there any kind of small things you wanted to mention? Just any little bite-sized pieces that are worth putting in here? Yeah, sure. I think one thing that a lot of Bad Company 2 fans out there would like to see is the AT4 back in the game, you know? Uh, put anti-air skill back in the game. Uh, take the lock-on mechanic out of things. I, I know a lot of people would like to see that rocket launcher back 
And uh, potentially the addition of limited reviving, you know, letting defibrillators maybe have charges, like two or three charges yeah. before they run out. So you don't get these endless uh, res trains, as they call them, where, yeah. you know, you can you can take down 10 guys and yet they're still coming because they're just nonstop reviving. If you if you limit our revivability, then eventually uh, people will stop. I mean, like you've said before as well, I think that would help balance up the assault class a little bit because, as you've said before, um, people often will not choose anything else, so I think having that would help that out. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a couple of small things. I'd just like to see some cutscenes as well between bases or at least at the beginning and end like we have with Band Company 2. I think people would like that back. For console players as well, I think it'll only happen if we have it on a next-gen console, but console players do want a small increase in player count, and I know that's something everyone wants. We're not talking a lot. At the moment, it's 12 each side. Perhaps they want to go up to 16 or something like that, but I think a small increase would really help people out. Um, and my last thing as well, I would like to see a small tweak in the aircraft dynamic because I, there's so many games where people get locked in an endless loop just flying around and around and around. Um, I think I would like to see some kind of dynamic where you start to stall after you've been turning for a certain amount of time um, just because it kind of can really make gameplay suffer and I think there'd be a lot more enjoyment if people had to fly in a slightly different way, a bit more full-on, a bit more combat and it would also encourage people maybe to attack the ground a bit more instead of just getting into an endless cycling loop. Oh, you know what you could do is you could add a blackout mechanic. Like if you're in a certain, they already have the G-force implemented <laughs> to the UI. So if you're if you're at like nine Gs for like ten yes. to twenty seconds, then your screen starts to fade out, and you're forced to literally pull some other kind of maneuver. That is an excellent. That's the best thing. Yes, absolutely. I I would go with that. Cool. Sounds good. So I think that wraps up what we're going to talk about. Uh, we would love to hear what you guys think and uh, what you guys want to see in Battlefield 4. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. This is Luton and Level Cap signing off. <laughs>